Stop searching for perfection. If you browse the internet for fitness advice, you're going to find a plethora of articles and posts claiming the best workouts, diets, exercises, and regimes. There's so much information out there, it's overwhelming. It's easy to get caught up in the search for perfection. The problem with searching for perfection all the time is it prevents you from acting. If we look at training, if we're training for weight loss, people get lost in the debate as to whether strength training or cardio is the best. When it comes to training for getting stronger, people have to analyze which system is going to work for them. You know, is it going to be the conjugate system? Is it linear progression, you know, starting at 60% and adding weight and working on waves and cycles? The five by five, the five, three, one. There's hundreds of different programs out there and you can get so caught up in what is the best system for you that you never actually take action or commit to anything. The truth is, with strength training, unless you've been a competitive powerlifter or Olympic lifter or really high level athlete, every program is going to have huge benefits for you. Any kind of strength training is going to have huge benefits for you. The key is to you to jump in and get moving. If you start debating about whether you know, sets of five, sets of three, bodybuilding is going to be the right system for you. You're just not going to take action. Pick one and go for it because that freezing of choosing the right method is going to really stop you from training. If we go back to the weight loss side of things as well, we talk about, you know, resistance training, cardio, steady state cardio, HIIT training, what's going to give you the best amount of fat burn, if you think about the number of calories that you're burning in, in an hour, let's say an hour session, whichever version you choose, whether it's HIIT training, um, steady state, or resistance training. If you do an hour of training and some of that hour of training you're doing HIIT and warming up and some of this you're just doing, uh, in, in an alternative session you're just doing an hour of cardio or you're just doing an hour of strength. If you combine the calories burned in the session with the calories you're gonna be burning for the recovery phase, they're going to be very similar. Maybe 200 calories difference, which is a, a snack, I suppose, in terms of the amount of calories extra you're going to be able to consume that day as a result of that. And then when we look at training, we look at exercises. There's the thing I see quite a lot is articles that talk about stop doing this exercise or do this exercise, you know, stop doing squats. They're not the best exercise for training your legs and stop doing bench press because there's better ways to train your triceps, etc., etc., etc. The truth is, any exercise, and I'm talking about classic training exercises, cleans, squats, presses, lunges, all of those straightforward classic exercises, any of those performed well, in other words, with good technique, good form, is going to give you results. And it's not going to present a higher risk of injury necessarily. Any exercise that's performed with poor form or too much load, just a lack of understanding of how the exercise should be working, what muscles it should be affecting, is going to have a negative effect. You're going to have a higher risk of injury. So the key is not in the choice of exercise, but more in the execution of those exercises. That's what's going to make the difference. So getting tied up in, you know, oh, what should I do today? I'm trying to build my chest. Should I be doing a bench press? Should I be using a dumbbell? Should I be using a barbell? Should I be having bands, chains? The reality is, again, for most people, just pick one and go with it. It's not going to make a difference in the long term if you've made the wrong choice today and it's highly like you have made the wrong choice. Um, don't avoid exercises that you see, you know, do, don't do squats, do lunges instead or do a split squat instead of a squat because you're going to get more bit. That's not true for 99% of people. Yes, there may be times where I program certain exercises for certain people where they've got weaknesses, but if you're thinking about programming for yourself, just pick exercises and, and just mix them up. The only time there's exercise you should be avoiding is ones that are obviously stupid, like standing on a BOSU ball with a band around your knees doing bicep curls, or standing on a Swiss ball doing the same thing. 
just no no point pointless exercise and your common sense will tell you that there's no benefit to it but when you go on the internet you see people with these convoluted devices you know sticking bands here uh, attaching different resistors to different planes that is just First of all, it's good clickbait because people think, oh, that's really exciting, you know, tying a band in while you're doing a bench press or, um, you know, make, putting yourself on an unstable surface. Yes, some of those are effective, but a lot of the time, that's just going to confuse you. Adding all those extra bits onto the exercise, if you're training on your own, is just going to confuse you. So just pick straightforward exercises and go with it. Whether it is exercise or diet or oil, workout plan don't let yourself get frozen by that search for perfection i know that it's that worry that you maybe you're wasting time by doing the wrong diet or doing the wrong, the wrong uh, workout regime the truth is though you're wasting more time making a decision on it i have a few blanket rules that i think will help guide you in making sure that you don't make a bad decision because like I say generally if you follow these rules you can't really go far wrong and therefore you can actually get yourself started and that time you're, you're wasting from choosing trying to pick the right one is not going to happen. In terms of general training I would suggest that you have that combination of resistance training so strength training with some form of cardio. It haven't got to be in the same session if you find it easier to separate those that works too. And in terms of whether the cardio should be high intensity or low intensity to start with it doesn't really matter just pick whatever one you can do right now strength training the exercises you should be sticking into your strength training program should be compound exercises the big exercises that you need to do that would be squats deadlifts overhead presses just big body movements rather than isolated so movements that use more than one body part, okay? Something that is functional, something that you do, pushing something away, pulling something towards you, rather than just standing doing curls, it's not something you necessarily do on a daily basis, something that's more useful in practical terms, like deadlifts and squats, those big exercises. And in terms of um, how you structure that, it doesn't make too much difference, especially if you're new to training. So whether you do it all a body in one session or whether you split it into body parts, splits, or doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you have some rest days in between movements. So if you're squatting on a Monday, make sure you're resting from squatting on a Tuesday. So choose something else to do. If you're going to do day after day after day, just make sure you're having those rest days and there's your body to recover, especially if you're new to training. So just remember it's that rest period is the time in which your muscles actually grow. So you do need those recovery days, attempting as it is to just train strength every single day. You do need those times for your body to recover for the muscles to grow. For mobility, you need to spend at least five minutes, five days a week, working on improving whatever positions you are looking to improve. So if you're looking to improve the squat, you need to spend five minutes working on whatever mobility choice you do on those. Now it's better to obviously have something where you're moving through a position just foam rolling won't do anything actually on its own. So make sure you're actually doing some form of mobilization. I prefer mobilizing the positions in terms of actually the whole movement rather than specific joint mobilizations. I just think again, you get more bang for your buck doing that. If you want to do some of the uh, more isolated stretches you can do, but that will be in addition to that five minutes you spend. With nutrition, as I said earlier, pick something, whatever diet you want to choose, Stick with it 100%, check the results after two to four weeks. Newer, um, higher body fat athletes will check after two weeks because you should see results more quickly. Leaner or more experienced athletes probably will spend a little bit longer before they start to see results if you're quite lean. It takes a little bit more effort to shed those last few uh, kilos or pounds of fat in there. Now, as you may well expect, if you don't want to have to be thinking about all of these choices, I'm going to recommend you come and join us here at CrossFit Children because that's what we do. We program every single day to get you fitter, leaner, healthier, to cover all those components of fitness 
that they involve those 10 components of strength, power, flexibility, stamina, cardiovascular endurance, agility, accuracy, coordination, balance. I hope I haven't missed one. Uh, speed, I suppose, is maybe the last one I've missed out there. We make sure that you cover all of the components of fitness, plus we talk and we work on our nutrition as well with nutrition challenges and just general knowledge that's uh, fed to you throughout your time with us. Now, it's funny because even people that are thinking about joining CrossFit are frozen in that search for perfection because they are thinking, I won't join until I'm fit enough or lean enough to be ready to come and join CrossFit. So they'll do something else because they want to be in the perfect position to start. And the best way to start and get ready for CrossFit is to do CrossFit. You don't need anything else. You will be ready day one because we will adapt whatever we're doing to fit around you. So do not let that thought that you need to be ready. Everything needs to be perfect. All the conditions need to be right. You need to start on Monday. You need to start on the first of the certain month. The perfect time to start is right now. Get yourself moving. It's the lockdown. We've been sat around doing nothing, eating junk for a long, long time. Don't wait for the all clear from the government. Let's get yourself started in whatever format you can do right now. I hope that video has helped those of you that are maybe caught up with what's going on online and never quite making a decision on how to train or flitting between one method and the other. If you've got any questions or comments or want me to give you some advice in another video, please drop a message in the comments below or feel free to email me, just visit the website crossfitchildren.com and there's a contact form there, you can send me an email and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks.